I counted and tabulated each and every pub and saloon in the local area, but I have to say, I'm not really impressed with this bar chart. After one week, the very first official Thunk questionnaire has 363 responses, and the results are fascinating. I created a lot of these queries with an other roll your own response option, even and especially where it wasn't appropriate. And if the responses are representative of my audience in general, Thunk fans can pride themselves on being part of an exceptionally diverse, opinionated, knowledgeable, and funny bunch. Let's get my big dumb face off the screen and look at some pretty pretty graphs. I'll indicate my own answers along the way, just in case you're interested in that sort of thing. Please feel free to pause the video or check out the PDF in the description if you'd like to look at the breakdowns in a little more detail. And remember that the comma and period keys on your keyboard will allow you to advance frame by frame if you just barely miss one of the results. Alright, let's get started. Almost half of you have been watching my little YouTube show for around two years. Thank you very much, by the way. And the majority found Thunk through YouTube's recommendation algorithm, which is surprising, as well as a diversity of other methods. Most of you enjoyed the whole gamut of topics, but more opinionated viewers prefer philosophy, with the remainder just about evenly split between rationality and design, science and mathematics, and social and cognitive sciences. Most of you enjoy the show well enough, and you also enjoy the episodes more or less the length they are, with around 30% of you sadistic jerks wanting me to edit videos anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour long. Guys, I have a job, but I don't know, I'll think about it. The vast majority of you dig the presentation style as is, with a few clamoring for more jokes. I do feel like the videos have been a little dry of late, as I've been really crunching to make them happen in a timely fashion and my lovely editor hates how my rambly sidebars dilute the central point of the episodes. But I'll fight with her a little more to inject some levity. Everyone who took the survey was subscribed, surprise surprise, but 15% can't really find the time to watch regularly, which I totally get. And while almost three quarters of you are doing alright or better, more of you than I'd prefer are having a rough time lately. I'm legitimately sorry to hear that some of you are struggling, but Hopefully, this is a little break for you. Stay strong. I believe in you. My audience's employment is split almost exactly three ways between academia, computer jobs, and STEM jobs, which is weird for a channel mostly about scholastic subjects, technology, and STEM topics. Most of you are between 20 and 30 years old, but only just over half, and around 5% of you have managed to escape the fetters of time altogether, so well done there. Okay, check this one out. Half of you prefer to drink either tea or hot chocolate, and only about a third of you are coffee drinkers, which I find fascinating when coupled with your respective areas of expertise. I sort of assume that everyone in those fields drank more coffee than I do, and I drink a lot of coffee. Also, the most popular alcoholic beverage of choice is none at all, beating out both snobby and non-snobby beer drinkers combined by about 5%. The remainder of you are about evenly split between the other options, including wine, which is my personal poison of choice. I don't have a tattoo, and odds are you don't either. We're actually significantly less likely to have a tattoo than the average American, which is interesting. For those of you who do have tattoos, I would seriously love to see them. Tweet at me, or email me, or upload to Imager and post a comment, however you'd like to do this sort of thing. Thunk viewers are split into about thirds with respect to education. Some college or no college, a bachelor's degree, which is all I've got, or pursuing or having achieved some form of graduate degree, which I assume the 8% of you who are sobbing quietly to yourselves about how much college you've taken are lamenting right now. Okay, now here's where some of the fun stuff begins. I thought I had been pretty generous with the diversity of my political categories, but a full quarter of you felt that the little boxes I created for you to tick were insufficient to describe your politics, which I kind of approve of. A fair number of people suggested that the whole enterprise of trying to nail down the complexity of political opinion with broad brushstrokes like liberal or anarchist was flawed to begin with. Fair enough. Those who felt comfortable slapping a name on their politics were mostly liberal or socialist, which is probably predictable considering how much I moan about capitalism, with around 7 or 8% splits for centrists, anarchists, libertarians, communists, and people who care more about the Game of Thrones than actual politics. 
About half of you don't really know what school of metaphysics you subscribe to, which is totally fine and probably doesn't affect your life negatively in any meaningful way. But if you're one of those, and you're interested in one of the most abstract philosophical discussions to date, I made a couple episodes that detail the positions. For those who ventured an answer, again, my categories weren't complete enough to characterize about a quarter of the answers, but for those who were left, concept nominalism seems to be the most popular position, which is probably closest to my own position most days, followed by Platonism and a tie between resemblance nominalism and trope theory. The lion's share of you are atheists, agnostics, and unbelievers of various stripes, myself included, followed by monotheists and a split between deists and pantheists. There's about a three-way split between moral anti-realists, like myself, moral realists, and people who don't know what category they fall into, with a lot of very interesting other responses. About 38% of you think that consequentialism, or utilitarianism, is the most compelling form of ethics, and I agree followed by virtue ethics, then people who haven't watched episode 104, then deontological theories. Some of the responses in the other category here threw me for a loop, and I had to go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy to look them up. Some of those people also answered question 6, which was about the content of episodes 159 and 160. For people who answered according to the categories I presented, most found coherence with pragmatism to be the most convincing theory of truth, followed by correspondence theory, then postmodernism, which I found surprising, followed closely by coherence and deflationary theory, which is my personal preference. I was impressed at the diversity of thought here, as in my question about mathematics from episode 93, a slight edge to people who believe math is discovered, but a strong contingent who believe it's invented, as I do. Newcomb's problem was split straight down the middle. I happen to be a one-boxer, but I get why many of you are two-boxers, and for the 40% who haven't seen it, I highly recommend episode 143. It's a lot of fun. Now, some predictions about the future. Almost all of you believe that you're going to die sometime before humans figure out how to live for more than 500 years, if that ever ends up happening. But a small contingent holds out some sort of hope for achieving a breakthrough in the next years. And I'm glad to see that some other Thunk viewers are donating to the SENS Foundation, even if they're relatively sure it's a long shot. I purposely put that question before this one, as extending your lifespan might change your answer, but the viewership is pretty evenly split between believing that strong AI will or won't happen before they kick the bucket, with around 15% of you totally unsure. Interestingly, only 12% of Thunk viewers think that strong AI is entirely beyond our capabilities, but for those who think that it will happen eventually, 41% of you feel that we'll manage to make the first AI benevolent towards humans, while about half that number think that we're going to seriously screw it up. Personally, I think we'll manage it in the next few decades, and we're probably going to be not very happy about it. I deliberately left the other response off this question about Nazi punching because, although I'm sure you all have very nuanced and detailed reasoning about your answers, I wanted to see some numbers. And the numbers are fascinating. 41% said it was never morally permissible. 10% said it was always morally permissible. And half of you look to other factors to determine its morality as an act. I think I vacillate between always punching and it depends most days, but I get why that's morally repugnant to many people. Finally, the important questions. This is a logic puzzle from a book by Raymond Smolian, an American logician and philosopher as well as a concert pianist, stage magician, you know, he's that kind of guy. If you'd like to avoid spoilers, jump ahead by about 30 seconds. I'll give the answer in 5, 4, 3. So, because their answers differ, we can eliminate the possibility that both Alice and Bob are knights, which means that Alice must be a knave, because she's lying. Now, if Bob's a knight, his entire statement would be true. Either he's a knight or Alice is a knight, but they're not both knights. That's correct. However, if he's a knave, any portion of his statement might be errant, thus making the whole statement a lie, which would also work in this situation, so we can't know which one he is. Most of you don't know about D&D &D alignments, which is shocking, but maybe I should have seen it coming as they've been sort of obviated in recent editions. But those who do know seem to prefer chaotic good, followed by neutral good and chaotic neutral, the alignment for people who hate alignments. Only around 6% picked lawful neutral, which, because I'm a DM, I am by default. 
At this point, about 14% of you were looking around desperately for some sort of escape from the endless questions, but most of you were dealing with my inane inquiries admirably. A full 12% of you are subscribed to the Thunk subreddit, which was surprising, and a few of you even know about the Thunk website, which is just bananas. Most of you know about my Patreon page, but a fair number didn't. I'm sure it's a total coincidence, but I have like four new patrons this week. Weird, right? Most of you would at least entertain the notion of a podcast, which I've tried to do before, but just haven't made work properly yet. I have an amazing thing I recorded with a friend of mine who's a professional academic philosopher about nonviolence and Nazi punching, which I really should publish, but haven't cleaned up the audio for almost two years. You're mostly in favor of or apathetic to the prospect of advertising to increase viewership, with about a quarter to a third of you staunchly opposed to the idea of mainstream popularity, which... Honestly, I've entertained the notion a few times, but there were a few open-ended questions about how to make Thunk better and what sort of topics you want to see in the future, that kind of stuff. And I have to say, the vast majority of the answers are extraordinarily thoughtful and kind, and I don't know if I could say the same thing if the survey was polling anyone but diehard Thunk fans. You are amazing. Thank you. If you haven't filled out the survey, I promise I've read every one of the answers thus far, and I'm taking them all to heart. I'd love to hear what you think, and as per usual, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to blah blah, subscribe, blah, share, and don't stop thunking.